Hi, everyone. God bless everyone. For those of you that are tuning in for the first time, my name is Betty Gonzalez, and I will be bringing you today's House of Peace. I hope everyone had a good day today. Today is the third part of our lesson. We had um, the first part two weeks ago, and last week was the second part. Today, I will be bringing you part three. We're going to get right into the lesson. And it is titled, Walking in the Favor of God, Part 3. I'm sorry, because I got little things that keep popping up on me here. <clears throat> it happened just 10 generations after Adam and Eve. What had changed during this time? The answer is that sin entered the world and the effects of evil are still being felt in our world today. And I feel it's now more than ever that we're seeing the effects of a lot of evil. For us, a generation is about 40 years, and in only one or two generations, we've already witnessed a degeneration in our culture. Prosperity and materialism have increased, and reverence for the Lord's day and respect and care for others has decreased. And I know we've all noticed that, all the craziness that's going on in the world. To see how much can change in 10 generations, we must look back to the year 1620. The world we live in today bears little resemblance to that era. By the time 10 generations had passed since Adam and Eve were created, Earth's condition was corrupt. First, God's evaluation. Then the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great on Earth and that every intent of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And that verse can be found in the book of Genesis, chapter 6, verse 5. God's heart. The Lord was sorry that he had made man on the earth, and he was grieved in his heart. And that is um, verse number 6, also in the book of Genesis, chapter 6. God's decision. The Lord said, I will blot out man whom I have created from the face of the land, from man to animals, to creeping things, and to the birds of the sky, for I am sorry that I have made them. That is also in the book of Genesis, and this one is verse number seven. One righteous man. And we all know who that righteous man was in the eyes of the Lord. In spite of the dismal and discouraging state of the earth, there was one man who was different from everyone else. And we know who that was. That was Noah. But Noah found favor in the eyes of the Lord. Noah was, right, was a righteous man, blameless in his time. Noah walked with God. We're going to go to the book of Genesis. verses 8, chapter 6, verses 8 to 9. But Noah found favor in the eyes of the Lord. This is the account of Noah and his family. And I'm going to keep reading. <clears throat> Noah was a righteous man, blameless among the people of his time, and he walked faithfully with God. Noah had three sons, Shem, Hem, and, Je and Je Japheth. Now the earth was corrupt in God's sight and was full of violence. God saw how corrupt the earth had become, for all the people on earth had corrupted their ways. So God said to Noah, I'm going to put an end to all the people, for the earth is filled with violence because of them. I am surely going to destroy both them and the earth. So make yourself an ark of cypress, cypress wood. Make rooms in it and coat it with pitch inside and out. This is how you are to build it. Although he was not sinless, Noah had three essential characteristics that set him apart from the rest of the generation. He listened. Number one was he listened to God. He trusted God and he obeyed God. So those were the three characteristics that set him apart from everyone else. One was he listened to God. Second, he trusted God. And third, he obeyed God.
Therefore, the Lord told him about his plan to destroy the earth and commanded Noah to build an ark, which we just read. Through one obedient man, God would save human civilization. Since we too live in a sinful world that is rapidly changing and becoming increasingly wicked, we must ask some searching questions. So those questions are, does God see you as righteous and blameless? Something to think about. The next one, could your lifestyle be described as, a God, as godly and holy? Think about that. Think about your life, how you live. Are you different from the culture around you? Or are you caught up in all the pursuits and pleasures of this world? The next question. According to the way you are living, could it be said of you that you walk with God? Next question. Are you listening to him, trusting him, obeying his commands? Would you rather be viewed as classy by the world's standards or holy in the eyes of God? The Lord wants us to live in a deep, intimate, and obedient relationship with him rather than in, a, rather than in conformity to the world around us. This means that sometimes people who are living in sin will not want to be in our company because we make them feel uncomfortable. You ever hear that your spirit irritates their spirit? This is inevitable because like Noah, we are walking in light while those in the world are walking in darkness and we want to avoid the light that exposes their sinful deeds. Living in a doomed world. Although Noah was confident that the Lord would save him and his family in the ark, at the same time, he knew that God was going to destroy everything around him, including the people. Therefore, he probably experienced a mix of thoughts and emotions as he was building the ark in the midst of that wicked society and warning the people of coming judgment. You know, you just stop to think how was Noah thinking like, you know, the Lord's about to destroy everything around me, every everyone, everybody, except for what's going inside of my ark. Locked safely in the ark. When the ark was finally finished, God sent the animals to Noah. Because he had listened, number one, trusted, number two, and obeyed, he and his family were locked to the ark by the grace of God. After the Lord shut the door, the rain began, and it continued for 40 days and nights. The water not only poured from the sky, but it came up from the great deep below until the entire earth was covered. Like Noah, we never know when God will close a door, requiring us to turn our backs on everybody in order to be faithful to him. Obedience has sharply defined edges. We have no right to alter what he has commanded, change the timing, or opt for partial obedience. That's why it's so important to listen to God. Trust what he says and do it. Three simple practices will spare us from countless heartaches and troubles and may even save our lives. Noah and his family and the animals were in the ark for a little over a year as they waited for the waters to recite. Recede, I'm sorry. God accomplished what he had set out to do and rescued Noah from the flood. After God told him to leave the ark, one of the first things he did was build an altar to the Lord and offer him sacrifices and worship. In response, God made a covenant with Noah, his descendants, and every living creature on earth, saying, I establish my covenant with you, and all flesh shall never again be cut off by the water of the flood. Neither shall there be again 
a flood to destroy the earth. And we're going to go back to the book of Genesis. This time we're going to go to the book of Genesis, chapter 9. going to read verse 11 and it says and I'm reading from the NIV version I will establish establish my covenant with you never again will life be destroyed by the waters of flood never again will there be a flood to destroy the earth and again and God said this is the sign of the covenant I am making between me and you and every living creature with you a covenant for all generations to come I have set my rainbow in the clouds and it will be the sign of the covenant between me and the earth. Whenever I bring clouds over the earth and the rainbow appears in the clouds, I will remember my covenant between me and you and all the living creatures of every kind. Never again will the waters become a flood to destroy all life. Whenever the rainbow appears in the clouds, I will see it and remember the everlasting covenant between God and all living creatures of every kind on earth. So God said to Noah, this is the sign of the covenant I have established between me and all life on earth. And as we just read, I establish my covenant with you and all flesh shall never again be cut off the water, cut off by water of the flood. Neither shall there again be a flood to destroy the earth. And as a sign of the covenant, God set a rainbow in the sky. So whenever we see a rainbow, it's the covenant. Life today is exactly like the ancient world, but in many ways, but in many ways it is. I'm sorry. Life today isn't exactly like the ancient world, but in many ways it is. And like Noah, we must listen to God and trust him and obey. The three things. Trust, listen, and obey. We can't afford to be like the people in Noah's day who failed to recognize their time was short. Their wicked rebellion was blatant and extreme. But even though we may not be guilty of such evil or more sophisticated rebellion is still sin. Without, a, without dependence on Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord, no one will escape God's judgment. Today, God offers salvation, not by the means of an ark, but through his son, Jesus Christ. In Romans 10, 9, which we're going to go to right now. That's Romans 10, 9. If you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised from the dead, that God was raised from the dead, you will be saved. He gives the promise. And I'm going to read it again. If you confess with your mouth Jesus as Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. And as always, I like to end our um, House of Peace, our lesson, with some questions. Have you seen the culture change in your lifetime? I know I have. How are you different from your society? What makes you different? What makes you stand out from everyone else? In what ways have you conformed to the culture? What is the destiny of this world? We're going to go to Second Peter chapter 3. And we're going to read verses 5 to 7. And again, I'm reading from the NIV version. But they deliberately forgot that long ago, by God's word, the heavens came into being, and the earth was formed out of water and by water. By these waters also the world of, the of that time was lodged and destroyed. By the same word, the present heavens and earth are reserved for fire. But being kept from the day of judgment and destruction, of the ungodly. And that was that we just read from the second book, the second book of Peter, verse chapter three, verses five through seven. How should this motivate you to live? We're going to keep going. We're going to read verses eight to 16. But do not forget this one thing, dear friends. With the Lord, a day is like a thousand years. 
and a thousand years are like a day. The Lord is not slow in keeping his promise, as some understand. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief. The heavens will disappear with a roar. The elements will destroy, be destroyed by fire, and the earth and everything done in it will be laid bare. Since everything will be destroyed in, his, in this way, what kind of people ought, to, ought you to be? You ought to live holy and godly lives. As you look forward to the day of God and speak is coming. That day will bring about the destructions of heavens by fire and the elements will melt in the heat. But in keeping with his promise, we are looking forward to a new heaven, a new earth with righteousness dwells. So then, dear friends, since you are looking forward to this, make every effort to be found spotless, blameless, and at peace with him. Bear in mind that our Lord's patience means salvation, just as our dear brother Paul also wrote you with the wisdom that God gave him. He writes the same way in all his letters, speaking in them of these matters. In letters contain, his letters contain some things that are hard to understand, which ignorant and unstable people distort, as they do the other scriptures to their own destruction. Therefore, dear friends, since you have been forewarned, be on your guard so that you may not be carried away by the error of the lawless and fall from your secure position. But grow in grace and knowledge of the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. To him be glory both now and forever. Amen. And that is the end of today's House of Peace and of the three parts of our lesson that um, we gave each week. And as always, we ask you to share this House of Peace with others. Share it on your page. You never know, this can be a blessing to someone. Someone might really need to hear this lesson. Um, I thank you, everyone who logged in today and those of you that are going to log in later on. And I just want to give um, some announcements for the week. Every Tuesday at 7 o'clock, we have our House of Peace. Every Thursday, we have Bible study class at 7 o'clock with Brother Fabio, and that is in Spanish. Every Friday, we have youth service, and that is in person at 730 at Hope and Restoration Church. And every Sunday, we have our evangelical service. You don't have where to house where to go and worship. We invite you to come and worship with us at Hope and Restoration Church. Thank you, everyone. Have a blessed night. God bless everyone. Have a good day. Have a good rest of your week. Amen.